Would you rather have physical pain or emotional pain? I don't know how many people would answer that, right? But if you're going to ask me, I don't want any. There you go. All right, so I'm Pastor Ronald Ramirez, the pastor of Lycus Church International. We would like to welcome you to Lycus Church Online. And again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are at. And uh, we pray that today, as you worship with us, that you are going to encounter the Lord Jesus Christ once more. All right, so the title of our message, we have, a, uh, you know, we have fillers for this week and next week. And we're going to start a new curriculum on uh, Father's Day and the new series for uh, the Father's Day's Inconvenient Truths, right? It's about the hard sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ, all right? So we're going to have that starting on Father's Day, that's uh, June 20. Is, did I have the right date? June 20? Okay. And of course, uh, along uh, while we are at that, on June 20 also, uh, we, are, uh, we are going to celebrate Father's Day. There's going to be a barbecue at the playground at the church. So you are welcome. Uh, you are welcome. Uh, everybody's welcome to come, all right, um, on that, um, um, during that lunch. Right? So we're going to celebrate together. And of course, today, this afternoon, we are excited. It is summer out there. That's the title of our uh, um, training season this summer, all right? So um, life class is going to start. And um, we are going to, for all, everybody else who's not in live class, we are going to uh, start uh, what you call dive in, right? Getting deeper into God's Word. So we are going to have our launching party today. Come on, church. There you go. All right. So, um, and apparently uh, we, we still need uh, burger patties for this afternoon. All right. So, um, and for those who are, um, for those who are now um, um, like uh, you are gathered wherever you are at. And if you are free, and if you want to come here this afternoon, you can also come. All right, so be with us. All right, so um, that's it for um, the, just to prepare it. So let's go to the, to the message. The title of the message for today is, Where is God when life hurts? Where is God when life hurts? Um, you know, all of us are going to experience life's disruptions. But life's disruptions aren't necessarily God's rejections, right? They're meant to bring us to the right direction. So if you're going to look there, it is a redirection from the Lord God. And um, who among us had not experienced disruptions? Who among us had not been hurt? You know, all of us had been hurt. And there are times that they even happen when you are trying to do the will of God. Right? Somebody said that the safest place, the safest place is at the center of the will of God. I don't believe so. Right? Sorry. I beg to disagree. I believe that, that the best place to be where we are at is at the center of God's will. But it's not safe. Right? And we know that all the apostles um, except John had been martyred. And so if we're going to talk about safety, right, the apostles did not look for that. That the Lord Jesus Christ had actually said that, that we cannot be more than our master, right? No, no student is more than his master. But again, we thank the Lord God because he had promised that all throughout, he will be with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. So our passage for today is in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 19 to 26. So it, of course, you know the word lament. And it happens, you know, it's a, another word for, for those who are not so oriented with that word anymore. The, another word that we can use for that is grief. Why is the, this book of the Bible, why is this book of the Bible titled this way? Lamentations. Because Jeremiah, who is called the weeping prophet, he was the one who wrote this. And he wrote this when Israel was invaded. And then, um, then Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon during the time, took the best among the best of Israel's youth. And you're familiar with some of them. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Right? So it happened during this time. And of course, when things don't go our way, we have a tendency to ask that. Lord, where are you? And the next thing that we ask, Lord, what are we to do? Or what am I to do? And I pray today, Maybe, maybe you are not in this situation. But you are going to face situations like this in the future. 
Or maybe you are in such situation right now that you are asking this question, Lord, why? Lord, what, what am I going to do? Lord, where are you during this time of pain? Right? And, um, you know, yesterday uh, we had a mishap. Um, our second son, E.T., right? Um, known, his uh, real name is uh, Josiah Roy, right? Josiah Roy, right? So E.T., they were playing volleyball. We are having a good time at the backyard of, uh, we're celebrating the birthday at the backyard of one of our primary leaders and uh, Jonathan Miravite. So again, a shout out to Jonathan. Happy birthday, bro. All right, so uh, we, were, we were having fun yesterday. We were having fun yesterday. And then, right, um, um, they were playing volleyball. And Ichi accidentally, you know, went out of the, 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 the court. He chased the ball outside the, the, the court. And then he stepped on something. There was a fire pit there. And it wounded him, right? The, the wound was so big. Not really, really, not, not big, big, but big enough that it warranted that he needed some stitches. While we were having fun, while we were in a, in a um, you know, um, while we were enjoying one another's company, well, where the word of God was actually preached. And again, uh, shout out to, to our, our Jake Ramos for giving a great devotion yesterday. Yep. And, uh, oh, well, it's not Jake who gave the devotion yesterday. It was Hulk Hogan. <laughs> so, yeah, it's an 80s-themed uh, par- uh, 80s, um, um, themed party. And, uh, and, you know, so we were, we were having that, and we were having fun, and then this suddenly happens. And what do you think came to my mind when that happened? That question, why? Why? You know? Why? But how did I react to that? I'll give that answer later in the message. Right? So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we come to you and we pray that you're going, Lord, to, again, Lord, speak to our hearts and help us to understand your word. Lord, but we are not going to just, Lord, hear your word. We pray that we are going, Lord God, to, again, Lord God, be doers of your word. Thank you, Lord God, for all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In verse 19, it says, Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, right? So here, this is the way, this is the way um, um, Jeremiah had actually pictured his, his situation or the situation of their country during this time. And so he said, remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, right? So the first point for today is the gall, right? Life will always have times, you know, we cannot, uh, life will always have its downside, right? We cannot avoid the downsides of life. And as a matter of fact, the word that you use here, the wormwood and the gall, right? The meaning of this, um, wormwood is a, um, you know, it's a, it's a plant that is actually you are going to encounter in the scriptures in Revelation, where it was mixed with water and the water became poisonous. Wormwood actually is bitter, Right, the, the the term wormwood, where did it come from? Apparently, it is so bitter that this was used in order to to um, to, uh, uh, to so kids were being given this drink in order to flash out worms. Right, it's so bitter that the worms will get out from your body when you drink this. That's why it's called wormwood. Right, so here it is bitter, and then of course the gall. Right, the gall. That's also the, that's also the it's also bitter. And as a matter of fact, you remember um, um, one of those that uh, we are familiar where this is being used is uh, papaitan, right? So what is papaitan? It's a uh, Filipino soup that is actually bitter in taste, no? So that's from the, uh, the bile from the gallbladder that was used. So here, here, Jeremiah was saying, Jeremiah was saying, my life was bitter, right? There are times that this is how I tasted it, right? This is how I look at life. This is how I experienced it. And isn't it that we have been to different situations? It's not all good in our lives all the time. It's not all juicy, you know, um, all the time. It's not sweet all the time, right? Um, We can actually, well, 
Um, have you ever like uh, mixed sweet and sour? Right? Sweet and sour is good. But have you ever heard sweet and bitter? Sweet and spicy would, 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 uh, would be good. But have you ever heard of sweet and bitter? They don't mix. Are you following me? Right? In, 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 in our lives, when there's something that is sweet, that now you tasted it, it's supposed to be sweet, and now it's sweet and bitter, you spew it out. <laughs> you spit it out because, you know, it's spoiled. Right? And just like, a, have you ever tasted bibinka that is spoiled? I did. <laughs> I did. Yeah, so, and, and what happens when it's mixed with that? You spit it out, you know, because it's not good anymore. So here, Jeremiah was using that metaphor that life is bitter. But, you know, as they said, problems can make you bitter or can make you better. There you go. So next one in verse 20. Look at what Jeremiah had said. He said, my soul had them still in remembrance. Or my soul had them still in remembrance. Right? And, uh, and again, this is uh, old English for those who have not heard from, from, from me for a while. I'm using the King James Version today for this, uh, uh, for this message. Right? My soul had them still in remembrance. And he said that we cannot avoid the downsides of life. It leaves bitter taste. It surely affects us. Right? It, it actually like, makes us remember that. You know, there are times that life will, there are things that have happened in our lives that are traumatic. Right? How many of you had traumatic experiences? Well, different levels. Right? There are some of you that uh, when you woke up in the early in the morning and then you saw yourself in the mirror, that's traumatic already. Mm. <laughs> and there are times that in life, you know, there's like, there's so much drama. There's so much drama. And there are times that the drama is not coming from you. It's coming from the people who are around you. Right, Mai? Such drama. Nox? All right. Thank you, our minute girl. There you go. Right? But if we focus on those, if you focus, focus on those, it's not only that your situation was bitter, you yourself become bitter. You know how they say that hurt people hurt people? Right? Because they are carrying this. They're carrying that. And they become bitter. Right? We Filipinos even had a term for that. Yeah? Bitter Ocampo. Can you imagine? We just made a joke out of it. But have you seen the people who are bitter? Right? And when you mention a, a certain name, right? They, they just, you know, they just, uh, you know, it's kind of like a click. And then all of a sudden, their mood changes. Right? Just for example, right? Um, Karen and Keith were talking. And then Karen mentioned the ex of Will. Hmm, Sharon. Right? And then all of a sudden, kids mood changes. Right? She don't want to sing anymore. <laughs> she don't want to sing anymore. And then all of a sudden, she looks at Will. You know, if you see this couple, Will and, uh, and, and Keith, you know, they're one of the sweetest couple that you'll ever meet. Yes, there you go. All right? Every time that Will will actually, will actually talk to, to, uh, to Keith, it was with, you know, a sweet voice. <laughs> There you go. And you see, Keith, her hair suddenly becomes long. Right? And she cannot help it. Her eyes, you know, they, they become, you know, it opens and closes. Yeah? He, her eyes open and close. Right? Like, like this. <laughs> All right? And then she cannot talk anymore. No. You, know, you should see them you know, when, when, they're, when they're kidding around. But, you know, and but then... Because of something in the past, right? Something in the past, even somebody who's so sweet like, like, uh, like Keith, then all of a sudden, things change because of bitterness. But look at what Jeremiah said here. He says, and is humbled in me. Then the next point 
in verse 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. You need to be, you need to be intentional. In what way? So the next point that we have, the great. Right? So life will always have its goals. Life will always have its bitter moments. But then, as Jeremiah had said, he shifted his focus on what is great. And here, look at what he said. I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Right? So he became intentional and hang on to that hope. And what did he say? Right? What did he, what did he recall? Look at what he says in verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They do not fail. Right? Most of the time, bitter people, because they are trying to demand justice. Right? Bitter people are unforgiving. Am I right? And there are times that people are not just bitter against other people. They are bitter with their own circumstances. We even have a song in Filipino. You know that song, uh, Kung natapos ko lang ang aking pag-aaral, there's in sanay. <laughs> Remember that song? Right? We have a lot of songs like that. And we actually blame the situations in our lives. But Jeremiah said, you cannot dwell on those. You cannot dwell on those. But look at what he said. Instead, he remembered some other things. He shifted his focus. He said, instead, I recall this and I have hope. He shifted his focus on whom? He shifted his focus on God. Hmm. Where is it? He said there again, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Jeremiah, again, realized his situation before the Lord God. That if you're going to think about that, that we have all sinned. We are not, we have not been perfect in our performance when it comes to our righteousness. We had failed God time and again. And because of that, knowing that we are serving a holy God, that we have a holy God, and He cannot stand sin, Right? And the tendency for us humans is to minimize the sins that we do and magnify the sins of others. Right? But the Lord God is telling us that, that if God is going to really demand the way He should, all and every one of us should have been gone already. You should have been consumed. Hey, Pastor, my sin is not that great. For you, right? But remember, we are serving a holy God. Jeremiah, right? Jeremias, right? Jeremiah, remember that. That instead of looking at the bitter things and asking this, why me? He instead asked this question, Lord, why am I not consumed by my sins? Because Lord, you are merciful. He shifted his focus, right, from himself, from those that are happening around him, from his circumstances, from the bitter things that are happening in his life. He remembered his God. He had recalled all these things. He said, I remember these things. Number one, that God is merciful. Number two, that he is compassionate and his compassions do not fail. Hmm. His compassions do not fail. Last week's message, right? If you haven't, uh, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't uh, um, seen it, if you were not with us last week, right? Visit that. That was delivered by our deacon Jonathan George, and um, he spoke about how the Lord God had promised that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, right? And uh, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is so great that he had put the focus instead of just about. Our situation, he actually focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, on the goodness of God. That is the attribute of God, that he is good. Here, the Lord God is telling us, it's there, it says there, my, um, la, um, mercy, um, wait, goodness and mercy. In other words, right, mercy was translated this way, loving kindness. Loving kindness. And this a warped way of looking at the Lord God. 
there are some people who look at the Lord God as if that God is going to, was, is just, you know, an, a universal police just watching out for the wrong things that we are going to do and then stops us with lightning and thunder, right? But understanding that God indeed is merciful, God is compassionate, we shift our focus. And here it is, right? The next thing that you first, right, focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, in like us, um, the meaning of that, we put a uh, acrostic for the fo focus that is uh, fixed on Christ, your sight. Yeah. yeah, I know. I messed that, that up a lot of times. Focus is fixed on Christ, your sight. Come on, type it in, type it in. All right, so what's focus? Say it with me. Fix on Christ, your sight. There are so many times the reason why you are bitter because you keep on looking at the bad situations. You forget to look at the Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the ultimate, the ultimate um, expression of God's mercy and compassion is the Lord Jesus Christ being given to us, dying on the cross of Calvary, that we may have eternal life. And look, next one. The next thing is, after that you focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, then count your blessings. Count your blessings. Mm, there, that's actually a hymn. No, count your blessings, name them one by one. Right? If you are going to look at, you know, I don't know, our tendency is always to look on the negative. Right? And there are people who are always positive, which is not really good also, because there are times they already lie to themselves. But instead, we have another option to focus on Christ, then count your blessings. Count your blessings. Hmm. The Bible says, the next one, the next verse there, it says they are new every morning. What is new every morning? God's mercies. God's compassion. Right? They are new every morning. And um, it is refreshed daily. Shout out to refresh. Right? Um, while I was uh, preparing this, I was looking for an illustration. It is like this. In the Philippines, every time we go, my kids actually uh, enjoy being in the house of my dad, my, my, my parents. And every morning we have this, right? Uh, it's only a stone thrown, throw away. There's a Filipino, uh, there's a Filipino, there's a bakery there. Of course it's Filipino because they're in the Philippines, right? So there's a bakery there that makes, it's actually, you know, one of the more popular in, in, that, in that place, right? More popular ba bakery in that place. They make fresh pandesal. If you are there late, you cannot get any more, right? Because that's how popular the place is. So my dad would actually wake up early and get this pandesal for the kids, right? So every morning, there's fresh pandesal, right? Fresh pandesal. And, uh, you know, apparently, uh, one of my questions about this segue, um, the, one of my problems with pandesal, why is it sandy? Why does it have to have those crumbs that when you... you, when you Eat that, it becomes messy. Can somebody please tell me why do you have to have that? Then in that bakery also, they have a pandesal that doesn't have crumbs outside. They call it tubo. Yeah, so, and, and that's the one that I enjoy. But you know, and just imagine this, right? Early in the morning, then you, you, you have your hot pandesal, then you put in butter, or ano yung matamis na bao, you know? What, 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 what's matamis na bao in English? Coconut jam, right? And, and then you see the, now there's ubi butter, right? And then you, you wipe it there, hot pandesal, and you see the butter, you know, melting. And then you bite it, yummy, right? And there's nothing like fresh pandesal early in the morning, every day. Yeah. <clears throat> now, it reminded me while I was like thinking about this, remember the model prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ gave, give us this day our daily bread. But the Lord God reminds us that man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by pandesal alone. We Filipinos, we need rice. <laughs> All right, but here it is. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Even when things are going great around you, but not if not because of God's mercies, God's compassion, God's faithfulness, we are all consumed. 
But praise the Lord God. Look at what he said there. Great is thy faithfulness. There you go. I know when I said those words, everybody started singing in their in their minds. Even even my started singing here. Yeah, great is thy faithfulness. One of the most favorite hymns. Yeah, morning by morning, new mercies I see. And indeed, right? Do you have problems right now? The Lord is telling us, my mercies, my compassions, they are new. Every morning, my faithfulness is great. Hmm. Right? So every day, the Lord God is telling us, the sins that we had committed yesterday, the Lord God, once you confess them, they're gone. Right? The Lord God says to us, right? So I will remember your sins no more. And aren't you glad that every time that you wake up in the morning, you actually, you actually can trust the Lord God that you actually can be assured of this, that there is fresh mercies, fresh compassions of the Lord, right? And not only that, this is another day. You look forward to every day because this is another day to experience God's faithfulness no matter what happens. Mm. Again, not everything looks good or tastes good. But here's what the Lord God is telling you. That He turns all things. Some of them are bad. Right? Some of them are sweet. Some of them are bitter. But the Lord God says, the Lord God says that He turns all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Romans 8.28 And then the Lord God says, my mercies, my compassions, they don't fail. And it is available for you every day. They are new every morning. And peop people of God say, Amen. 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 But you're not done with the message. But, you know, it's just like a good part to say that Amen. Yeah? You're so silent, all right? So here, it is always, so every day is another day to experience God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness. Now, the next verse brings us to the next point. The next verse in verse 20, 24. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in Him. Now, so what's the meaning of this portion? The meaning of that, this is the picture of inheritance. In, in the Old Testament, when when a family, you know, of course, a father dies, you know, and they, the kids receive the inheritance. Do you know that the eldest will always get the 50% of it? And the rest will be divided. The rest will be divided among the other siblings. So if there's 12 of you, it should have been 12 portions, right? No. The, 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 the eldest will get 50% of that. So that's like, if you're going to think about it, six portions. Right? That belongs to But here, and there are times, but there are times that some people do not get their portions. Do not get their inheritance. Or there's nothing to inherit really. Right? If you are from a, a poor family during the time. Now, here's what Paul, or what Paul, here's what Jeremiah said. The Lord is my portion. What is the meaning of that? He's saying that even if I lose everything, I have God. As my portion. He is my inheritance. And remember, Paul actually told us about this. Paul actually said, uh, Paul actually said that we are co-heirs with Christ. Right? So now, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 27, Peter actually said this. Then Peter answered and said to him, right? See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? Lord, what benefit do we have? And for those who are serving the Lord God faithfully, I would like to encourage you, right? Don't give up. And during this time, the context of these verses was when the Lord Jesus Christ actually talked with the, um, the rich young ruler. And the rich young ruler, the Lord Jesus Christ used the same words in order to call the apostles that follow me, 
that follow me, he actually said that to the rich young ruler. But before that, he said to the rich young ruler, he said, sell everything you've got and then follow me. <laughs> sell everything you've got, give it to the poor and then follow me. But then the Lord Jesus Christ, when he said it to him, the Lord Jesus Christ became fond of him. The Bible says Jesus loved him and then told him that. But then the rich young ruler cannot do it. So he, his, his head down low, bowed down, right? He went away from the Lord Jesus Christ despondent with great sorrow, the Bible says. And remember, this is the same calling that he said to Peter and Andrew and John and James. And remember what these this four did? They left their boats, their nets right away. That's what the Bible said, immediately. Now, when you are being called by the Lord God, He has plans for you. He has great purposes for you. So this rich young ruler went away. And so the apostles were like saying, and then the Lord Jesus Christ said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It, that's not saying that wealthy people, there will be no wealthy people in heaven. The meaning of that, that there's a lot of wealthy people who are going to rely on their wealth instead of the Lord. So this is what happened here. And then, and then the Lord Jesus Christ said, with man this is impossible, but with God nothing is impossible. Everything is possible. Right? And then Peter said this after that. Right? We know that story. I just have to recall that today. And now look at what Peter said. Lord, we left everything for you. So then what is the benefit? Then what is the benefit? Right? Um, last week, you know, in our, in our uh, primary meeting, that's actually the devotion that I gave. You know, there are times that when you're in the ministry and nothing works, those who are leading cell groups and then your, your cell members are pass away. Right? In Tagalog, pass away. In English, pass away. Right? Yeah, you, uh, those who are pasaway right now, who, was, who are hard-headed, you don't want to follow your, your cell leader, right? And one day you will pass away. <laughs> and you might pass away soon. Yeah. Okay. All right, but the Lord, the, the, thankfully, the Lord, the Lord God is compassionate. It's a good thing that I'm not the Lord. Mm. Right? And, and so he said, so he said, we had left everything. Lord, we are suffering for the ministry. That's like what Peter was trying to say. Then what, what shall we have? Jesus answered. Listen to the answer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Assuredly, I say to you that in the rege regeneration, the meaning of that in the life after, you know, eternal life, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of His glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones. Right? These are these 12 thrones, of course, there are 24 thrones according to Revelation. And 12 of those are going to be occupied by the apostles. The other 12 will be occupied by the elders of Israel or the 12 tribes of Israel. What is the meaning of that? And look at what it said. Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So the apostles were given that. Tribes of, um, they are going to judge the tribes of Israel. And look at the next one. Verse 29. Listen. And everyone who has left houses... Or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands. For my name's sake, in the other, in the other passages, you know, parallel passages for this, for the, for the sake of the kingdom, the Lord God says. Look at what he says. Shall receive a hundredfold. You can never outdo, outwork, outgive God. Tell you. So everything that you spend, time, talent, treasure. And even at times, that even to the detriment of relationships. Some of you, when you became Christians, you, you lost friends. Am I right? Right? We have testimonies like that. Excuse me. Ah. <laughs> that can be good. That was good. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, um, this is Banayad water. <laughs> and the Lord God is telling us that in all this, even if I lose everything in this life, possessions and all, and everything, and look at what the Lord God says, inherit eternal life. 
There's nothing that can compare to what God has for us. Follow? Do you follow? You know, one of those sad things that I know of, our dear Karen, you know, she lost friends. Even friends who were supposedly Christians who brought her to church at one time. And then afterwards, they met again at the bar. And afterwards, when, when Karen finally understood the gospel, she received the Lord Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. These very friends who were supposedly Christians, right, started going away from her. Mm. Why? Because were, did you stop taking a shower after that? When you became a Christian? No, but there are times the Lord actually proclaimed that. That he brings a sword. That there are times that even in your own family, you are going to be hated because of the gospel's sake. But then the Lord God said, the Lord Jesus Christ said, you shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Everything that we lose, the Lord God restores. And then so much more, he rewards you in heaven. Going to the next one, right? Remember God remains, that God is our portion, that God is our inheritance. Therefore, I have hope. The Lord is good unto them, says in verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for Him, to the soul that seeketh Him. Right? God is good. All the time. All the time. Come on, respond, you know, those who are online, come on, one more time. That's weak. Right? We haven't done this for quite a while. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Isaiah 40:31. Right? This was a uh, um, two weeks ago. This was the message given by our uh, our brother John Grenade. Right? Yeah. He's, don't you think that uh, John is actually explosive? Yeah, John Grenade. There you go. All right, in Isaiah 40, 31, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Psalm 34, verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see the, the, the Lord, that the Lord, He is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. That's the meaning of that word wait. To hope, to trust in the Lord. In Matthew 6, 33, so he, this is where the rubber meets the road. And look at what the Lord God says. And the soul that seeks him, God is good to them. God is good to those. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Remember, God is our portion. God is our inheritance. And the Lord God said, I'm going to return to you everything a hundredfold. Hebrews 11.6. Every day we could look forward to this in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 and look at what the Lord God said. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Right? Again, don't forget that word diligently. Diligent. You know, not casual. Not half-hearted. But diligent. And remember the Lord God said, He rewards those who diligently seek Him. Right? So, we, um, we have a term in, in, in Filipino that when, when we get to this point, there's an expression that, you know, um, not really, I haven't heard it for, for, um, before, but recently, it became a byword. That when you like what is happening, right, or what is being presented, and then you say, San Kapa. Right? So, how do you translate that in English? San Kapa. Where are you, Papa. <laughs> right? where else would you be it's like this where else will you like to be right here it is if you hope in the lord if you trust him if you obey him remember this is what the lord god is saying he is a rewarder of he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him right where else what else would you need and then in the in verse 26 it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. I forgot to mention the third point, the good. Right? So our, our, our outline today is the gall, right? The great, the good. Right? 
for those who are seeking God diligently, the Lord God says, it is good for you. It is good for us. Now, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Because it is the Lord who works. It is the Lord God, right, who works. Um, there's a, the, do you know what is the anthem for, the Christian anthem for during the pandemic? What song became popular? Waymaker. Waymaker right? Uh, you know what's for, what, uh, what is the song for the stimulus? Uh, the blessing, yeah. Yeah, because it says who's going to pay for the stimulus? Your children and their 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 children. And their children. <laughs> right? So, uh, right? So, but that song, The Waymaker, remember the chorus? Oh, is it the chorus or the bridge? That says even, even when we don't see it, He's working. Even when we don't feel it, He's working. Right? Um, how does it go? He never stops. He never stops working. All right, there you go. All right, so, uh, and in all this, the Lord God is telling us, wait. Blessed are you when you're waiting for the salvation that is coming from the Lord. And isn't it that there are times that when we put things in our own hands, we mess them up more, right? And I praise the Lord God that Kersey had a change of heart. Hmm. She learned to wait on the Lord. Mm. Yeah. But actually, it's Jake who was blessed more. Because Jake waited for a long, long time. And now they live happily ever after. There you go. Mm. Yeah. Superman and the Ghostbuster. <laughs> um I mentioned about Papaitan. Yeah, and the Papaitan is actually, you know, it's a famous soup that was uh, popularized by Ilocanos, those who are in the north of the Philippines. And this is mostly composed of cow or goat innards, but mostly, I've, you know, al almost all the time, it's from, in the Philippines, it's goat innards, right? The name of this dish, actually, Papaitan, was derived from the Philippine word paet or bitter. Right, so the bitter taste of the soup comes from the bile, or that this is the bitter juice extracted by uh, by the liver and stored in the gallbladder. All right, and it aids to aid the digestion. So, but you know, in the Philippines, and then it is mixed with lime and lemon, right? Or calamansi is the best one. But do you know, in the Philippines, I never liked it. Right, I didn't like the taste. Yep. But then when I came here, I was still candidating in Living Word. And that is uh, before Laika's days, it was Living Word. And in Living Word, somebody served me. And because I was still new, I was still new, of course I had to be polite. So somebody gave me that papaitan in a bowl. It was steaming hot, right? But this time, I was already like smelling, it, it smells good. And then I tasted, man, I was blown away, right? So it's not just the papaitan, but it is actually the one who cooked it. The one who cooked this is Papa LP, who is now in heaven, right? And he is actually the best papaitan, right, in living word. But let me tell you, this is the best papaitan that I've ever tasted in my life. So every time that he cooks papaitan, I'm looking forward to that. Why? It's not just the papaitan. It is because of the, someone who had cooked it. Life is the same. It's not just about the life, the ones that we are experiencing. But it's because of the one who's putting all things together for good to those who love Him. Right? His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. You now, there are times, you know, God works all things together for good to those who love God. And remember I told you that Ichi got wounded yesterday. But even in those, we could see God's hands. Why? Right before that accident had happened, Michelle and I were already at the gate. We were about to leave. And then, you know, um, one of our young adults 
one of our young adults, um, uh, actually, uh, our, some of our young adults, you know, um, Fatima, Ting, and um, Papal, right, came. This is the right time. So we got held back. We weren't able to leave yet. And Greg, the boyfriend of Ting, was there too. So we were talking with him, right? And we got delayed. It's just like at that moment, during the time that we were talking, that's when Ichi had the accident. And you know, I'm, it was so Pastor always that good. Here's one thing. Thing is a nurse. There's nobody who's a nurse there. He, she came at the right time. And even as being held back, because afterwards we had to bring Ichi to this emergency room. So he got stitches. So it might be a bad situation, but here's what I'm telling you. This might be not an exact illustration, but let me tell you, God is faithful to His promise. He is faithful that He will be with you. He is faithful that He will protect you, that He will provide for you. He is faithful that you are going to experience His presence when you fully give your heart and your life to Him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, the Lord God says, It is written, I has not seen, ears had not heard. Now, have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. The meaning of this is those who would surrender their lives to Him. Would you? And the Lord God, here's the invitation of the Lord God for you today. And you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Have you been asking? You're not going to be here if you, have not, if you didn't have that question. Right? You are here today. It's not an accident. And maybe you're asking, Lord, can you be more real in my life? And here's the answer of the Lord God to you. Seek me with all your heart. In Jeremiah 33, 3, somebody said that this is God's 911. And listen, call to me. And I will answer you. But Pastor, I've done this already a lot of times. Now, the question is, did you do it with all your heart? Hmm. And look at what the Lord God had promised. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Right? There are things that the Lord God is going to reveal to you. But first things first. Right? So again, Not all things in life are sweet. And as a matter of fact, some of you might have a lot more that is bitter. But again, bring that bitterness into the hands of the great chef, our Lord God, who is able to put all things together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. And you know what? This God, our Lord God, He will never waste your pain. Even those that you are thinking as mundane, as meaningless, before God it is not. The Lord God is actually using all those in, to pre in order to prepare a great dish, in order to serve those who are around you. And when you surrender your life to the Lord God, it's not only you who is going to be blessed. But the Bible says that God, that through you, the fountains of living water will flow. And that is the Holy Spirit. So you might be asking, Pastor, how can I have this? Like two things. Number one is that you repent of your sins. You have to recognize that you had sinned before God. That you had tried to, to live your life away from God. Trying to pursue your own things, your own dreams, your own desires. Regardless of what God is thinking. But this is what the Lord God is telling you. That if you repent of your sin, you confess your sin, the Lord God says that I am faithful to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you from all your unrighteousnesses. Right? Even though your, your, your sins, your heart is as scarlet, your soul is as dark as the darkest could be. But the Lord God had promised, I will wash them away as white as snow. And here's another thing that you need to do. The Lord Jesus Christ had offered His life to you 
so that you might have eternal life. Right? And here's what you promised. That whosoever believes in Him shall never perish but have eternal life. And more so, the Lord Jesus Christ also said that I have come that you might have life that is eternal life, that is divine life, and that you might have it more abundantly. Right? So your bitter, your paet, can become a great papaitan. Right? Right now, it might not make sense. But when you put it before God, maybe you will not fully understand while you are here on earth. But tell you one day, when we finally see the Lord God, right? When we are there with Him, right? We, all things will make sense. But here, it is like looking in a glass that is still unclear. But one of the things that I am assured of is that God will always be with me. He has promised life and life more abundantly. Now that question, where is God when life hurts? The Lord God is actually all throughout. He had been desiring that you turn around and then see Him that He was waiting all along. Would you give your life to the Lord God today? Right? And again, I'm not telling you God does not promise that life will be, that there will be no more troubles in life. But here is His promise that He will never leave you nor forsake you. That He will be with you to the ends of the world. He will be with you to the end of the age. So would you want that? If that's the desire of your heart. I'm going to close in prayer. In the middle of the prayer, I'm going to invite you. If you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, you can follow me in prayer. You can follow me in prayer. Right? So, again, pray loudly with me. Right? Because the Bible says, with the mouth confession, right? Belief in the heart is turned into mouth confession. Right? I mean, with belief in the heart and with mouth confession is turned unto salvation. So, pray loudly with me. But again, it's not the prayer that's going to save you. It is God's grace that you are now receiving in faith. So believe in your heart. Pray loud with me. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. That life, Lord God, will, Lord, will always have, Lord, bitter parts. Lord, that we might be. And there are some, Lord God, that might have, Lord, all their life had been bitter. But Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, because, Lord, our lives can be turned from bitterness, Lord God, to goodness. Because, Lord, we are serving our good God. And indeed, Lord God, that great is your faithfulness. And I pray, Lord God, for those who are going through, Lord, some of us, Lord, are going through illnesses. Some of us, Lord, are going through emotional pains. Some of us are going through financial constraints. Some of us, Lord God, are having a hard time professionally. Some of us, Lord, are having a hard time with their relationships, Lord God, and their family. Lord, we know that you are God. And we know, Lord God, that you answer our prayers. So, Lord God, again, I pray for those who are going through tough times. Lord, again, I ask you, Lord God, this favor. Can you again, Lord God, show yourself to them, to manifest yourself to them, that they might know, Lord God, that you had never neglected them, that you are there. And I pray, Lord God, that through these problems, through these troubles, that they will turn toward you and find and taste and see that the Lord God, you are good. For those who want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ today, if you want to turn a life that is, you know, full of problems, full of trouble, instead of dwelling in the hurts, that you can have that hope. If you want that hope, today is the day of salvation. Open your heart. Open your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive Him as your Lord and Savior. Would you pray with me? So if that's the desire of your heart, pray with me. Pray loudly with me. Let's pray. Follow me in this prayer. Lord God, come on, pray with me loudly. Lord God, thank you for loving me. Thank you, Lord, that you are a forgiving God. Lord God, I come to you and I ask you, please forgive me for all the sins that I had done against you. Thank you, Lord, for your promise that you had forgiven me. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for giving your life for me on the cross of Calvary. I now open my heart and I invite you 
to come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. From now on, you will be my God. You will be my master. You will be my Lord. You will be my King. You will be my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for your promise that I now have eternal life. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So that's our message for today. Where is God when life hurts? Again, let your life be turned from bitterness to goodness because we are serving a great God, a good God whose faithfulness is great. And that's our message for today. In Jesus' name, amen.